Right, where the hell's that Sega logo? Oh, fuck it. It's Katai Daisen Sao for the Sega Saturn. Otherwise known as In the Hunt in America, in the UK. It's by IRM. So be prepared for some tough shooting. By the same guys that brought us Metal Slug. So you know what to expect. Vast amounts of animation. Huge numbers of enemies. Crazy explosions, crazy bosses. Generally, huge amount of fun. Right, so. The story involves disarming some system called DAS. And unlike in most games where you're a bloke, or a ship, or a mecha, you are a submarine. And it, the game takes place underwater. This is a, a standard submarine. Um, has access to standard submarine weapons like torpedoes, so depth charges, surface uh, to air missiles, floating bombs, and the rest of it. Now uh, the pickups change between A and M, giving you different types of um, air missile. The action underwater um, mainly consists of dodging enemies, dodging bullets, and uh, firing. Now this game features a very different sort of firing action. Um, clearly you are only on, you're underwater and you're firing you know, missiles and torpedoes. It's not like a, a sky-based shooter where you're firing rapid volleys of bullets. The action therefore feels rather slow and sedate. But don't be fooled by that, because within the game there is an awful lot of skill required to navigate through the little underwater passages, uh, keeping your eye on all the enemies. And as you can see here, there's just a job load of excellent background uh, scenery to interact with. There's bridges to blow up, there's windows to smash, there's skyscrapers to... Uh, navigate there's all sorts you will see and uh, the next level is a particular gem so although this isn't a forced scrolling game um, it does it does feel like a shooter because of the type of action going on and you don't have to jump which I think is great because I'm really going off games where you have to jump so here, you know, only a quarter of the screen is underwater. So you've got to keep your eye on what's going on above water, yet you've got only a very limited amount of space to navigate. Right, unless you've uh, had your eyes closed the last 10 seconds, you will notice before you one of the slickest, most incredible sprites. Uh, pieces of... Uh, sort of action sequence really around at the time Got this giant Neptune like character crawling up chasing you from the depths of the ocean I played uh, Neptune once in a school play and I was very sick and I had to run off the stage to vomit at one stage um, though thankfully unlike this character uh, there wasn't any scenery falling on my head that wasn't an attempt at a joke that was just a reality and my eye didn't fall out but I, uh, I, I did vomit so I had to run I did make it to the toilet and um, I haven't played Neptune since I think that's quite funny, that cheeky little punch at the end there. Right, more fun with scenery on this level, it's the underwater city. Lovely, lovely sprites on this level. Look at that torpedo, isn't that gorgeous?
Right, the thing about this game that I don't like so much isn't the game itself, it's the fact that it gives you infinite continues. So it sort of makes it easy for you to just complete it, which I did on this occasion, and it took me about 50 minutes. If I'd had more self-restraint, I would have stopped after five continues, but I was filming it and I thought, what the fuck, I'll complete the game. And in the game's, to the game's credit, I will play it again. Um, it's a game that's worth practicing and worth getting good at because there's no game where it's cool to die all the time, to die every five seconds. And this game has got so much stuff going on, you just want to have a good, good experience playing it. Um, so, yeah, bit of a drawback, really. Um, plus, it doesn't feature checkpoints, unlike the likes of R-Type and uh, Image Fight, you know, which have got these tough checkpoints. You have to complete the whole, the whole sort of stage before you, uh, you know, you can't just progress where you left off where you die sort of thing. whereas this one you can just carry on after you've uh, been twatted this is a lovely little sequence underwater shooter where you really the whole screen now is, is the play area it's probably the only level where that's the case In most of them there is a water line and again here one of the classic IREM segmented water beasts another very nice shooting sequence this one so hang on let me let me go back to the beginning why do I like this game well it's pretty cheap to start with uh, it was one of the most recent games I've bought so it wasn't certainly wasn't one of the ones that I thought of getting you know, when I started collecting for the Saturn, it was right down at the bottom of the list. Um, mainly because I didn't know what the game was about. But also, you you see that it's a submarine shooter. Uh, and you think, uh, it's not very hardcore, is it? It's probably a bit slow. And indeed, it is a bit slow, but... By God, is there a lot of action packed into that game. Anyway, I like it because it feels silky. There's something very, very sort of satisfying aesthetically about the game. Um, the animation is splendid. There, there is so much animation going on. I mean, there isn't a single thing that doesn't have about 10 frames of animation. Everything. The, the background scenery and sprite design is first rate. And like I've said, you, you interact with the scenery in every level. Uh, from, you know, bits of rock you have to navigate to huge enemies and uh, missile sections like that last one. A bullet dodging here for you. Just to show that even in a game where the character's movement is quite slow, that bullet dodging really does present really great challenge and experience so that's the end of the gameplay um, time for some scores now summing up give this game nine for graphics staggering really uh, eight for sound nine for playability ten for value for money you can pick this up for under thirty dollars overall nine thanks for watching and i'll be coming back at you soon with another sega review